When I got out of jail, they kept my passport. Why? <laughs> they wanted me on a short leash. I said to hell with that. Forged a new passport and hit the road. And did you didn't get caught? Oh, not for a long time. Rent the robes quickly. Forged some documents for extra rations and lived off that. That's terrible, Ruska. Well, I had to survive, didn't I? Couldn't you have worked? At what? I had no proper papers, no skill, no profession. So I made my big mistake. I enrolled at the University of Leningrad. On my own papers. I figured they wouldn't be looking for me after such a long time. But you were wrong. I was back in the camps in a week. Twenty-five years. I've never known anyone like you. No special case. There are thousands like me. I'd like to help you. Would you? Yes. But how? Your father's a prosecutor, isn't he? Maybe you could speak to him. No, not my father. Clara. I want to live a better life. Maybe if I had a friend. Maybe I could... Can I talk to you like this? You can. You're from such a different world. My life hasn't been as easy as you think. Clara. Anything you want me to be, I'll become. You forge a diploma? No, really. You're all I want. The way you look at me. No, please. Someone might see us. Please. Let me kiss you. Please go. Oh no. Go. Professor? Professor Chelmoff? Yeah. Uh, my name is Dmitry Solodin. I wonder if I might consult you about something I'm working on. Of course. What is it? Uh, not here, if you don't mind. I understand. Come. Just give me a little apartment. Tea? Uh, no, thank you. Professor, I understand that you're a mathematician. Go ahead. Uh, I'm not a scientist. I'm, I, I'm a simple engineer. But I've been interested, from a design standpoint, in the problem of creating a telephone voice scrambler. Such a device would, would break up human speech into so many fragments that the message would be impossible to decode without the proper receiving device. I've been working on such a transmitter unofficially. And you think you may have solved the problem? Well, uh, it would be presumptuous of me to say so. I know I lack the theoretical background, but I would be grateful if, if you would uh, look at my design and tell me if it has merit. So gladly, dear boy. I tell you my opinion tomorrow. Uh, thank you. May I ask one more favor? Please don't mention this design to Colonel Yakanov. Of course. Not a word. Make sure you see your face in that samovar. Yes, Mother. Mama, Katya, for goodness sakes, put the flowers over by the window. <sighs> yes, dear. What is it? When I was training, they told me that the prisoners I'd be in charge of were vicious, <clears throat> evil members of society. But they're not. Most of them are intelligent, gentle people. I'm not sure they belong in prison at all. Well, they must have done something, otherwise they wouldn't be there. What's happened with the just society the revolution was supposed to produce? Isn't that the way it's supposed to be? Of course. 
Clara, you know I'm not interested in politics, so I wish you wouldn't talk about these things. I find it very upsetting. I don't know why I bother talking to you at all. That's enough, young lady. Don't speak to your mother like that. But neither of you wants to hear the truth. Isn't it hypocritical to pretend this is a classless society? We live like rich bourgeoisie. The classless society is an ideal. Under Stalin, we are trying to achieve that ideal. That's all. But that's not what I see. I see a society where privilege is getting more and more entrenched. Look, you're trying my patience. Perhaps you just don't want to listen to what I'm saying. Perhaps all you really care about is feathering your own nest. Hmm. What's wrong with her? She always seems to be in a fury these days. It's just her age. She'll be all right when she gets married and settles down. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. Russia, the top egg good salt. Oh, what a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Happy birthday, Gleb. Every year, this man remembers my birthday. Even in the camps when we didn't have bread to eat, he'd always come up with something. What's this? A cigarette case? We're having a party tonight with a special birthday pudding. All right, quiet, everybody. Prisoners, Gerasimovich and Nurchin, you're to receive visits from your wives this afternoon. Transportation, 11 o'clock. Make sure you're ready. What's the matter? Aren't you happy to have a visit? I don't know. I thought I'd never see her again. I wrote and told her so. I don't know how I feel. Gleb. Would you ask Nadja to give my wife a message? Mm, of course. Tell her I love her, I believe in her, and I hope. Cheryl Oskolukov. This is an honor. Hello, Reutemann. Where's Yakunov? Uh, Colonel Yakunov has taken the day off. Some problem with his nose, no doubt. He didn't say. But I'm sure he'd want to come in. Shall I phone him? You can get us what we need, Major. Anything I can do, General. Anything. I come to see for myself the progress the acoustical lab is making with voice prints. You have good people on this project? Excellent people. Lev Rubin, who directs the project, is a noted philologist. And Gleb Nerzhin, who's working with him, is a talented mathematician. Perhaps you can arrange a demonstration. Yes, of course. But it'll take time to set up. Gleb Nerzhin is leaving to see his wife. I'll be in the lab. I don't like it. Well, We've been working on voice prints for more than a year. If anyone noticed, usually it was to laugh at us for wasting our time. Now, all of a sudden, this mucky muck makes a special trip to Mavrino to see how we're doing. Why? I don't know. Maybe he's heard how good we are. He's going to want a demonstration. He'll probably ask us to read a test sentence over the microphone to see if I can decipher it. Well, that's all right. You can read voice prints, huh? Yes, but only under very controlled conditions. Even then, it isn't foolproof. So? So, maybe we can give ourselves a little advantage by anticipating what's going to be asked. Fake the result? No, not quite. Just improve our chances a bit. <laughs> I don't believe this. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, look, Glenn, it's a valid process. We both know that. But it will be months before we perfect it for practical use. If we make a mistake now, they could scratch the whole project. Yeah, well, I couldn't care less. Yes, but in that case, they may not see any further reason to keep us in splendid luxury at Mavrino. We could find ourselves back in the camps. What do you want to do? As one of the authorized announcers, you'll probably be asked to read the test sentence. Now, if it is you, just say, Voice prints enable deaf people to use the telephone. Did you just think of that? Yes. It's not bad. All right. 
But if one of them reads something, then you're just going to have to guess by the sounds. If I stroke my hair, you're right. If I scratch my nose, you're wrong. Got it. On with the show. This is our visible speech device, known as the VIR. This machine was developed here in our own laboratories. Messages are spoken over a microphone in this soundproof acoustical booth. The VIR then translates the speech patterns into visual images which appear on the paper. In other words, voice prints. Thank you, gentlemen. Ah, and this is candidate of philological sciences, Lev Rubin. The only person in the Soviet Union who can read voice prints. General? Lev, would you please show the general what you and your machine can do? With pleasure, Major. Lev Rubin's associate, Gleb Nerzhin, will now enter the booth and say a few lines into the microphone. The VIR will record the message and Lev Rubin will attempt to read it. Would you like to think up a sentence? <laughs> no. Make up something yourself. Really true? Mm -hmm. Yes. Read it, please. You may begin. No, no, um, enable dead, dead people. Oh, that can't be right. Oh, deaf people, of course. Uh, and the last phrase is the telephone. I recognize it immediately because it's a combination that we use quite often. So, uh, voice prints enable deaf people to use the telephone. Is, is that correct? Amazing. Reuben, can you distinguish individual voice traits on voice prints? That is the subject of our research. We call it individual speech type. Then I have an assignment for you. I want you to listen to a tape recording and tell me what you make of it. With pleasure, General. Uh, but would you excuse my associate? He has to prepare for a visit from his wife. Yes, yes, he can go. No, Lev, I don't really... Prisoner, you're wasting time. Get out of here. You're a prisoner, Reuben. But you're once a communist. I'm still a communist. And have a chance to prove it. Why do I have to get changed? Well, we want you to go out looking your best. Why? Surely. As this superb uniform was designed by the Ministry itself, you'd think they'd be happy to have it shown in public. Just put on the suit. Oh, it stinks. Who was the last wearer? A latrine worker? Move your ass, will you? The bus is waiting. They'll faint when they get a whiff of me in this outfit. Why do you always have to make a fuss about everything? The tie, too. You're gonna have to help me with that. You do it yourself. I can't remember how. Ugh. Ugh, the suit does stink. Well, can you identify the caller for us? I'll try. We got five names from the foreign ministry. Here they are with their pictures. Petrov. Mikhail Petrov. Sigovity? Leonid Sigovity. Zavazin? Anton Zavazin. Velikovsky? Sasha Velikovsky. 
Volatin. Inocente Volatin. You'll have to record their telephone voices. It'll be done soon. I'll also need to work with the tape. Major Reutemann will have it. You and he will be assigned a room in the top secret section. They're getting it ready. Who can I speak to about this work? Only Major Reutemann. I request the help of my associate, Gleb Nerzhen. The problem is very difficult. I'll need someone to exchange ideas with. All right. Make sure he understands this is the higher security. Good morning, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. May I speak to Inokenti Volodin, please? Inokenti Volodin's office. May I speak to him? I'm sorry, he hasn't arrived yet. Ask him to call his wife. his office. Can I speak to him? One moment, I'll put you through. Lisa? Yes? Have you been looking for something in my office? No, I just unlocked it. I haven't even been in here. Someone has disturbed my papers. Maybe the cleaning staff? Well, I'll leave a note for them, will you? Certainly. Attention. You know the restrictions. You are to receive nothing from your relatives. Anything that is to be turned over to them or to you must first go through me. You will not discuss work, work conditions, living conditions, the daily schedule, or the location of this institute. Then what can we talk about? Politics? <laughs> talk about your guilt. Talk about your repentance. <laughs> Quiet! I will not discuss your indictment. That's a secret. Ask about your families or your children. Oh, one more thing. From now on, holding hands with visitors and kissing are forbidden. We only see each other once a year. Are you challenging the orders, prisoner? But my wife doesn't know. She'll kiss me. Your relatives will be informed. There's never been such a rule. There is now. How long will the visit last? If my mother comes, will she be let in? The visits will last half an hour. I will admit only the person for whom the notification was made. And my five-year-old son? Children up to the age of 15 are admitted with an adult. Are there any more questions? Good, outside. Streets. But there's guy at prison, perhaps. Last time I wrote to my wife, I told her it was useless to wait. She should get married again and forget all about me. And what did she reply? I haven't heard. Hope she took my advice.
But what else can we do? Write letters. Write every official we can think of. Our husbands are suffering. There's nothing to be done. It's a nightmare. Section 58, that means imprisonment forever. You can't get around it. If we can't obtain their freedom, maybe we could get exiled for them instead. I would endure his being sent to a northern settlement if I could be with him. You still have the strength to go to the Arctic. You're lucky. Oh, I'd marry the first prosperous old man who'd take me. And you could leave your husband behind bars? It's easy to see you haven't been waiting long. Five years. And before that, he was at the front. I can't count that. It isn't the same thing. Then it was easy to wait. Everyone was waiting. Well, just show them your permit and they'll look at your parcel. Please don't be so rough. It's a little cake for my husband's birthday. How do I know it's his birthday? You all know the rules. Any violation will terminate these privileges. Over there. 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 You, you're here. No. It's against the rules. I haven't seen my husband for a year. No, it's against the rules. that it should be today. So, Stars, <clears throat> I bought you a cake. It wasn't very good because I didn't have all the ingredients. We didn't have to do that. We have everything we need. But no sweets, you said. And you told me not to bring you any more books. Are you reading the Yiseni? Yes, yes, I'm reading it. new blouse. Show me more. You look thin. Can't you eat better? I eat well. It's just that my life is so hectic. Huh. Tell me. No. You first. What can I tell? Nothing. You're not wearing your wedding ring. No, it's better sometimes. Voting's connected with me. You once insisted that we get a divorce. Yes. So you wouldn't be against it if I had to for convenience, not for real, of course. Good girl. You should have done it a long time ago. Don't hope too much for the end of my term. Term is conditional. Are you just saying that because you think I could really leave you? I swear. I swear I wouldn't. I would never leave you voluntarily because I love you. I love you always.
sir. And then I'll be back at lunch. Ah, Velikovsky, how are you? Fine, just fine. Well, this exhibition, as unremarkable as it seems. Well, you won't have to endure it much longer. Soon it will be the Louvre and Saint Germain de Pré for you. When are you off? The day after tomorrow. Thank you, Steve. You must be looking forward to it. Well, it's always painful to leave Mother Russia. But when it's our duty, Volodin. <laughs> of course. I think I'm being posted to Canada. Oh, really? They tell me the winters are worse in Siberia. Mm, what a shame. Luck of the draw. Nara's going with you, of course. She'll come a little bit later. She has obligations here in Moscow. I'd have said that Nara couldn't wait to plunder the couturiers of Paris. You were right. Security around the ministry this morning. Have you noticed? They're not exactly inconspicuous. Two of them were ransacking my office when I came in. I didn't even bother to look up. Incredible. Any idea what's going on? Well, the rumor is that someone in foreign affairs is an American agent. It seems he made a phone call to the embassy. He called from the ministry? From a phone booth, apparently. The information could only have come from foreign affairs. Damn fool yeah. thing to do. The way they're watching the phones these days. Yes, very foolish. I don't wish any harm to anybody. But I hope they get in soon. We're living under a microscope until they do. I've got to go. Enjoy Paris. Thank you. Sorry. I was clumsy. No harm done. Seems to suit you. What does? Everything. Reason. You seem to be thriving on it. They say the prisoner's character. One minute. One minute. Nadia, don't be surprised if they send me away from here, far away. My letters stop altogether. Can they do that? Where? Don't tell me you started believing in God. Pascal, Newton, and Einstein. You were told not to name names. <laughs> Break it up. <laughs> do the best for yourself in everything you do. What are you doing? Your visit is cancelled. Cancelled? What the hell with you? Nurture! Outside! Now! Thank you. 
What's going on? George Listen. Cabal will take delivery of a parcel in a radio store on Broadway. Uh, look, this connection isn't all that good, I'm sorry. Could you repeat that slowly? Please? Listen to me, will you? One day soon, an American contact will pass classified material to a Soviet spy, George Cabal, in a radio store in New York City. This is the tape Oscar Lithoff wants us to analyze. So, what do you think of our mysterious caller? Sounds like somebody trying to keep his country out of trouble. Clint, the man is clearly a traitor. He must be found out. S surely you can see that? I'm sorry. I completely forgot. Your visit. How was it? She loves me. Still loves me. Thought I was going to cut all ties with her, but... I don't know what to do. Work with me here. If we're successful, it will be impossible for Yakunov to ignore. They may even give us our freedom. I don't know. I don't know! What if I am? I'm Nadia Merzina. My husband wrote my ring with Dimitri. Just a minute. What do you want? I've got a message for you. Come in quickly. I don't like my neighbors to know what I'm doing. It's a mess. I'm not time to worry about things like this. I'm lucky if I can get food on the table. Here. I'll be your place for you. No, 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 I can't stay. You said you have a message from Dimitri. He says that he loves you. He believes in you. I'm just saying. Do personal sections call him in every week to fill out security questionnaires? Does he have to hide his marriage as if it's a disease to keep a miserable, low-paying job? Do the neighbors spit at him on the street? Does he have to comfort the boys when they come home with bloody noses because their father is a prisoner? Does his own family curse him and turn their backs on him because he won't get a divorce? It's fine for him to say he hopes. How long has your husband been in prison? Five years. I tell him to go. Look at you. You've still got your looks. But in seven years, what then? 
You won't even want you. Do yourself a favor. Don't end up like me. Get a divorce and make a new life for yourself. What makes you feel like that? Why? Why do I stay married? What can I say? I'm a stupid woman. I love the bastard. Why didn't you tell me about that phone call to the American Embassy? Hmm? Did you think you could keep that information from me? This conspiracy strikes at the heart of our military policy. That's why we are investigating every clue, every possibility. You still don't know who made that call? Our talented scientists at Marino are working day and night. I know how to deal with my enemies. Here they are! Trotsky and all his ilk. Right here on my shelves. Choke, shot. Killed in car accidents, poisoned, burned, ground into manure in the camp. Here they are, all lined up. Silence forever. I keep them here, close to me. It's well. You didn't have your way. You would have destroyed the country. I alone. No, I Only be a matter of time, uh, Comrade Stalin. Uh, please, believe me. Why should I believe you? All you want to do is deceive me. That's all you ever want to do. All of you! How can I rest? How can I not work at night? No way. Get out of here! I'm tired, I want to sleep. I remember how delicious it was when I was a child. I used to sleep without a care in the world. No, I, I can't sleep. The country depends on me. And I'm growing old, old like a dog. An old age without friends. An old age without love. An old age without desire. I don't even need to see my daughter anymore. I don't want to see anybody. I'm too old. But let my enemies not deceive themselves. They can take advantage of my failing strengths. They will soon find out the old Georgian bear still has iron teeth. Let them try. Let them try. like a day off, is it? Enjoy it. I admire the way you keep going at that book, Gregory. I'm a very bad reader myself. Perhaps you could suggest a way I could get myself to read more. Try talking less. Hmm? 
boys. What's the game? Poker? How about making it a three-hander? We don't play cards, so it's still pigeon. You think I'm the only informer here? I don't know, and stop whining. You want to know who the others are? Come with me tomorrow. I'll show you. Sure, you will. I will. Tomorrow's payday, right? You can forget it. It's hardly worth waiting in line for those measly 30 rubles. Yeah? Well, all the informers get exactly the same amount. 147 rubles. Meet me outside the pay offices at midday. I'll show you where my loyalties lie. I found some more things. Oh, good, I'll go out with them. How kind of you to lend me this dress. I'll look nice tomorrow. It must be someone special. You're blushing. Are you in love? Don't be silly. Serafima. Yes. May I go avoiding you? Yes, of course. I'm in love. And the person I'm in love with, Roxette Mavrino. Who is it? Is it one of the administrators? No. Oh, Clara. It's not dangerous. What if you found out? I can't help it. I love him. And I'm going to help him get free. We're going to a movie, Nadia. Want to come? No, I'm too tired. You sure? Yeah. Hurry up, Nadia. We will be late. There's plenty of time. Hello, Captain Chapman. Hello, Alienka. Hello, you, Dad. Captain? Nadia. What's this? A funeral? But which of you is the corpse? You all look reasonably lively to me. Neither of us. We're off to a movie. And what movie is that? A German flick, the Indian tomb. Oh, yes. Wonderful picture. Lots of shooting, lots of killing. <laughs> You'll enjoy it. Well, goodbye, Captain. See you later, Nadia. Bye. Bye, Captain. Nice. Well, Nadia? Nikolai. Want some tea? No. Nadia. Go. I don't understand you. Understand what? Let me go, please. Why do you keep throwing lighted matches in the dry? We're going to stay right here. Please, let's go somewhere. Damned if I can figure you out. What's going on? I told you my husband was killed in the war. The truth is he's in prison and I visited him today. What difference did it make? Dead or alive isn't doing you much good, is he? Soldier's wife, don't go hard. That's it then. Let's have a drink. Mm. You 
You've got a good head on your shoulders. There'll be happiness here. What did you find out? Good news, Viktor Semyonovich. The voice print process is further ahead than Colonel Yakunov led us to believe. We should have a suspect within days. Days? We don't have days! He called me in this morning. He knows! You know what that means? He actually took me. By the throat. But don't you take comfort in that. I assure you, if they put me against the wall, you'll be standing right beside me. Well, when? Tomorrow, you say? Well, I'm not sure. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm telling him. Tomorrow. Any objections? Hmm? This is my friend Alexei Lansky. Alexei, this is Clara. Forgive me for arriving uninvited. Don't be silly. You're very welcome. <clears throat> well, isn't she everything I've said she is? Why couldn't you have waited? I assure you that if I'd seen you first, this lout wouldn't have stood a chance. Your fiancé would be very glad to hear that, Alexei. Did you say you two were friends? In all matters except those of the heart. Please, everyone, dinner is served. <laughs> But it's not bad, eh? <laughs> Your wife's cake is splendid. Thank you. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, oh. Rosie, what is that? <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> you never heard of black liquor. <laughs> well, uh, my advice, gentlemen, is not to inquire too closely. I can assure you of only one thing. It will not cause brain damage. <laughs> Blindness, maybe, but not brain damage. <laughs> now, my friends, I, I would like to make a toast. Uh, to the person 
Who is the reason that we are gathered for this? Wait, wait, forgive me, Dimitri. I know I'm breaking tradition, but I have to speak. My heart is very, very full tonight. Hello. Um, I just want to say that uh, not everything in our lives is black. Huh? <laughs> I mean, the, the happiness that we've, we've had here tonight, this banquet, the free exchange of ideas without fear. We never had that in our so-called freedom, did we? Friends. <laughs> My birthday. <laughs> and my life has been, uh, it's been blessed and, uh, and degraded. But nothing compares with the, the genuine grandeur of, of human beings as I've known them in prison. And I am very proud that my modest anniversary has brought together such a select company. So let's, let's drink a toast. To the friendship that thrives in prison box. Bravo, Dimitri. Oh. It has proof. Don't you think so, Gad? Oh, has proof. <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, this, this is indeed a, a memorable occasion. Not only are we celebrating our friend's birthday, but for the first time in recorded history, Lev Rubin and Gleb Nierjan have actually agreed on it. <laughs> no, I, I think this calls for another toast uh, to harmony among friends. Uh, uh, harmony. harmony. <laughs> <laughs> Smoother, yes? No. Well, again. To our glorious leader. To Karnak Stalin. And now, I would like to propose another toast. To a man who has served the Soviet Union selflessly, with all his heart and soul and with complete devotion to the ideals of the revolution. Ladies and gentlemen, please raise your glasses to our esteemed host and my beloved father-in-law, State Prosecutor Piotr Makarian. <laughs> Sit down, please. Thank you. As you all know, I am a man of few words. <laughs> yes, except when it comes to defending the interest of the Soviet Union. I would like to thank you all for honoring me tonight. And I would like to thank my son-in-law, the acclaimed Soviet novelist, uh, Nikolai Galakov. And also take this opportunity to remind him that the family is the linchpin of the state and to suggest that it's time he produced something other than great literary works. <laughs> well, I said enough, perhaps from the look on my daughter's Dinera's face, <laughs> even too much. Okay, thank you for coming and enjoy your dinner. <laughs> like the devil to train them. Was it easy for them? Luba, I don't think it's a good idea to talk to my father about this tonight. It's not like I'm a stranger to him. He's known me ever since you and I were in kindergarten together. I know, but it really might be better to see him in his office. Oh, he is in Nokenti. <laughs> what I said to my first son-in-law earlier goes for the second one as well. <laughs> in Nokenti. Multiply and prosper. <laughs> Multiply and prosper. I want the grandchildren. Please. Is he studying again? He always does when he's at a Clem, don't be an idiot. You don't have to do anything. Just be there. I'll do all the work. If you stay away, you're just going to make things worse for yourself. No, oh, I just find it very difficult to take all this eavesdropping and snooping and spying on citizens. I mean, 
Surely even you've got to find those methods unacceptable. These are dangerous times. The Soviet Union has every right to protect itself against its enemies. So, what do you really believe, what it comes down to, is that the end justifies the means. I don't believe that for myself, but it's different for the country. Our ends are the first in human history that are so noble, they justify the means by which they are being attained. Oh, so that's it, is it? Well, let me tell you that dishonest means destroy the end. Hmm? Dishonest? Perhaps you deny the morality of revolutionary means. Perhaps you deny the necessity of the dictatorship of the proletariat. Have I said a word about politics? Have I? I just asked you a purely ethical question. Does the end justify the means? And your answer gives you away. I didn't say they do in one's personal life. So what? Morality shouldn't lose its force as it broadens its scope. If that were the case, then it's wrong for you or I to kill somebody. But if the great infallible one liquidates millions, then that has to be judged in a progressive sense. Isn't that what you're saying? Stalin is remaking this country. According to comprehensive statistics, everything is progressing according to plan. Industry is flourishing. Agriculture is producing a surplus. And I suppose science is moving forward and culture shines like a rainbow. Look around you. I'm talking about the real world. Not the malcontents like yourself behind bars. This is the real world. Right here in this prison. This is your Stalinist dream. I could ask for your help. Oh, anything. Anything you want. Anything. It's about my father. He's in prison under the law of August 7th. Unfortunately, he's very ill and we're afraid that... Why are you bringing this up now, in the middle of this marvelous party? Well, I, I wasn't going to, Citizen State Prosecutor. But our request for pardon has been with your office for, for six months. Father. Mm. Can't you do something? He's paralyzed and he'll probably die. Clara, so. be quiet. Hmm? Uh, Luba, call my secretary and request an appointment. Hmm? Clara. Oh, look, Andy. Ah, oh, you're off to Paris again, are you? Yes, on Tuesday, yes. I was there once, just after the war. It was quite bleak. Ah, it's the old Paris again these days. I may be traveling there again, myself. Done research. Oh, what are you working on? Hmm. Matter of fact, I was, uh, I was going to contact you. And I'm thinking of doing something about the Soviet uh, diplomat struggle for peace. <laughs> the story centers around a young diplomat, not unlike yourself. I might even join you in Paris. Give me a call. Hmm? But it, it probably will all come to nothing anyway. Yes, my writing lately has been shit, you know. Nikolai, what are you saying? Well, it's just, I mean, I have very good intentions, but soon I realize I'm writing for the critics. I'm writing for the regime. You are one of our most famous authors. All your plays were produced, your articles published, and children recite your poems in school. And the more mediocre they are, the more praise I am given. No regime anywhere has ever loved its great writers. Only the minor ones. I have turned into a hack, all of you. Kolya, don't you think you've had enough? Oh, most likely. Most certainly. I'm sorry. Given the way you feel, I don't know why you avoid the Shaikins, the Yakanovs, and the Oscar Lupov. Do you think I don't know that Shaikin is a thug? Yakanov a bore, and Oscar Lupov an officious fool. There are many in the judicial system, right up to the ministerial level, who are complete scoundrels. But they are also officials in the progressive movement that I've dedicated my life to, and I must respect them. Why be so hypocritical about it? They are your true friends. You're getting on very dangerous ground here, my friend. Seriously, why don't you become an informer? Then Shaikin would write a favorable report, and your case would be reconsidered. 
I'm warning you, people get their faces smashed in for saying things like that. Knock it off, you two. I want to get some sleep. All I'm saying is that it uh, would show a little more consistency on your part. After all, if the end justifies the meat, one must have principles. You haven't any. All you can offer is abstract chatter about good and evil and prepare for your own crucifixion. Figure it out for yourself. Hmm? Since we have all been imprisoned justly, and you are the exception, then that means that our jailers are in the right, and you, clearly, belong with them. Tonight. Yes, as always. She told me she may not go to Paris. Yanka, what's going on? Do you see love her? More than ever. I don't think she believes it, though. Why shouldn't she? It's my fault. Yanka, what's wrong? I'm lost, Clara. I know something has gone wrong, but who or what can help me? I'm all on my own. Are you sure that Mara can't help you? That's why she's got to come to Paris. But I guess it's too late. Of course it isn't. I've been asking myself some questions, too. I need your help. There's a prisoner at Mavrino. He's serving a 25-year sentence for forging some identity papers when he was 19. Oh my God. It isn't right. I told him I'd try and help him. Uh, uh, Clara, I'd help him if I could, but it's a bad time for me. I'm leaving Tuesday. He can't wait. They could send him back to the camps any day. That's fine. There are some friends I'll reach tomorrow in the ministry hall. I'm making no promises. I knew I could count on you. No matter what they say about me, Clara, don't forget my loyalty and my love for all of you. Clara. Uh, Excuse me, Clara. Even Kitty, you have to come. I'm sorry. Mama wants to show him off. Yanka? Love and loyalty. There's nothing else in the world. Clara, I must talk to you. Yes, of course, Nikolai. No, not here. Can we go out in the hall? Yes, of course. Well, Nikolai? You said you had something to talk to me about? Clara, I didn't know what you think of me. I've ordered two seats for the Aurora restaurant for New Year's Eve. Shall we go? Shall we go just for the fun of it?
You're the dearest girl in the world. I want you to be my wife. What is it, love? I think I'm having an angina attack. Where are your pills? I ran out. I meant to go to the pharmacy, but I forgot. Glad, wake up. There's something wrong with Glad. What is it, angina? What is it? Call just a minute. We've got a sick man here. Now hurry, damn it, it may be serious. How is he? He seems a little better. I was dreaming just now about my cousin Boris. Have I ever mentioned him to you? He was sent to the camps for Trotskyite activities and murdered by some anti-Semites. I was the one that denounced him. Terrible thing to have on your conscience. No. I was acting in the best interests of the party and of the country. I never regretted it. I just don't know why I should be thinking about him now. What's this all about, Nershin? It's life. He's having an angina attack. Hmm. My medical officer is asleep. Listen, Shusterman. He is seriously ill. Hmm. And if anything happens to him, I will make a formal complaint against you. Now get that goddamn medical officer up here now. Now, I thought to myself, what if I go to her? What's wrong? Nothing. Nothing. Just hold. 